Hi there! This is the fifth and last in a series of videos I'm making on the news that HBO just hired prominent screenwriter Matson Tomlin to write the third Game of Thrones prequel series on Aegon's Conquest, the Targaryen conquest of Westeros that united the Seven Kingdoms and forged the Iron Throne. In this video I want to talk about when's the earliest we could see this. Because in the prior videos I explained that we'll probably run for five seasons, but we've heard that HBO wants to turn season one on the actual War of Conquest through the Field of Fire into a theatrically released movie, condense it into a big movie. Which I think is a good idea, it's mostly action-oriented, you could do that as a big three-hour movie or something. When could that come out? I'm going to make a longer video about what will Phase 1 and the later phases of the Westeros Cinematic Universe look like, so I'm keeping this short, just keep more focused, in reaction to how the clickbaiters are saying, oh, we'll see this by next year. No, we won't. There's two things you need to consider when you're trying to predict a schedule. The first is, from when they initially hire a writer to when we see something on screen, takes at least two years. Because it takes a year to write and then a year to film. Probably more, because you need to build sets, you need casting. Particularly for large-scale flagship shows, it'll take longer than two years. Or a movie, in this case. So, my short answer is, it's probably coming out between two to four years from now. Minimum two years, because we won't see this until 2026. They need to write it and they need to make it. And similarly, they are gearing up for a cinematic universe, but it'll take time that summer of 2024, we're getting House of the Dragon Season 2, and then it looks like we're getting Duncan Egg summer of 2025. Then 2026 is the first year we get what I call a double event, like Pacific Rim, where the way the schedule lines up, we get two shows in the same calendar year. We're going to get House of the Dragon 3, that's spring, followed by... Duncan Egg uh, Season 2 in a matter of weeks. Second thing, I said there's two things to consider. First is that it takes two years to get on our screens. The second is even other cinematic universes, like the example of the Star Wars and Marvel cinematic universes with their TV shows, they don't generally put out more than three live-action projects in a single calendar year to avoid oversaturation. And we haven't heard what they're doing with the Nymeria show. Young Corliss, they shifted to animation. Animation, they don't consider the same thing. That doesn't overlap quite as much. Assuming they're smart enough not to oversaturate, earliest we'd see this is like fall of 26 or something. But, and I'll talk about this more in the phases video, we're going to face another gap year in 2028, just the way the calendar falls, because Duncan Egg has to go on break for a year, they said, we're going to make it every 12 months for the first three in print novellas. But then we're going to have to take a gap and the production will slow because the remaining nine aren't in print. They're outlines that Martin has. And I talked before that I think Duncan Egg will be... T the whole 12 novella series will really be two, two TV shows. The first one is really seven seasons. Seven novellas? Because the seventh novella will presumably be the third Blackfire Rebellion to Stopping Point. Even so, the point is, because the third one is the last published one, they said we're going to at least make the first three, then pause and see what happens. It'll be slower to make the fourth one on the She-Wolves of Winterfell. We're looking at a gap year for Duncan Egg in 2028. And similarly, because House of the Dragon is a bigger show, takes a year and a half to make, Season 4 would come out fall of 2027. Meaning, at best, Season 5 comes out spring of 2029, and we think Season 5 is the Hour of the Wolf. But regardless of what it is, it would come out that spring, just the way the calendar falls between these things. So, 2028 calendar year, we wouldn't have Duncan Egg or House of the Dragon. And by that point, I think Phase 1, essentially, the flagship show is House of the Dragon, but Phase 2 would shift to the flagship show being Aegon's Conquest. And, the, okay, that basically Season 4 is a chapter break for the Dance of the Dragons. The Hour of the Wolf is really getting into the Regency era. I think that 2028 is when they have this big shift to Aegon's Conquest as a big theatrical movie, Summer of 2028, will be a great way to launch it, because they don't have any other projects ready. 
The X factor in this is when are they sliding Nymeria into the schedule because there is space late 2026, early 2027. Where are they going to put Nymeria in that gap or are they going to put Aegon's Conquest in that gap? Like, you don't think of it as a Christmas movie, but then again, like Avatar 2 and Dune were coming out in the Christmas season and Lord of the Rings movies, I guess. So not exactly a family-friendly movie, but like Dune came out at Christmas. I think Christmas season, fall at best, 2026, at the earliest. But if they want to do it right, because movies take longer, because of all the effects and the, the, the scale, and because they need to write the damn thing and cast it, usually you think like three years, but four years might be a little long, but what else would they have to fill the gap in 2028? I don't know. But I'm telling you, bare minimum, you are not seeing this in 2025, just that the production takes that long. I'm going to make a bigger video about the ongoing phases. There's going to be at least three phases through the next 20 years until they run out of ideas. Just every potential prequel, when would they overlap, when would that fit in? That's going to be a longer video. This is the last video I'm making in this series reacting to the immediate news that they hired a screenwriter for this. However, remember that when the news first broke that there, there are serious rumblings about Aegon's Conquest as a project broke last April, ten months ago in Variety, I did make some other analysis videos about this that are still just as relevant, so I'm going to link them. Particularly, I just re-listened to it, I realized I, I shouldn't remake this, it was good the first time. There's nothing more to say. I made a 20-minute video on how much would the Starks and Lannisters be in an Aegon's Conquest series. Like, how would you work them in? Because the Starks are really not in it. The Lannisters only slightly more, and my conclusion was basically, I hope people have shifted to the idea that it isn't just Starks and Lannisters all the time. But talking about other familiar faces, other great houses, how would that work? So I'm going to make this as, I'm going to split it off as a separate playlist now that we know it's a real project from... I had a playlist on other prequel projects in various stages of discussion. There's enough on Aegon's Conquest, I'll split that off. But immediately at the end of this and in the playlist, I'll link next to how much would Starks and Lannisters be in an Aegon's Conquest show. Please check that out. It's not in my current feed. I made it ten months ago. It's still just as relevant. I'll post it in the community tab as well so people don't forget it. And after that, I had another one on, like, well, how much source material is there by word count? Check that out, too, if you want to. So, that's what's going on with this. We also had some Dunkin' Egg filming updates. I'm going to make a separate video on that and the ongoing phases of the World of Westeros cinematic universe in the coming week.